Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Uh, just an update on the Phoenix 2x2 CNC router. Uh, my progress on it. Uh, I've been working on the back panel, control panel. Um, I'm using DMM Technologies DYN2 AC servos. Um, I've got the back panel all wired up and I've got uh, the motors turning. I'm bench testing everything right now. Um, I did the preliminary bench test with Acorn to make sure it was alright. and went ahead and wired up the back panel and um, uh, did some preliminary tests on the back panel and then went ahead and connected my uh, DYN2 AC servos make sure they got power and all the power voltage was right before I connected them I'm getting 56 volts DC out of my toroidal transformer and power supply and um, so anyway I'll go handheld and give you a quick walk around then we'll go over to the router I'll show you the uh, stock for the mount for the monitor and the PC um, to let you know how that all turned out I ended up uh, as I said I got a long piece of ball thread and then I milled a flat in it and I drilled and tapped into the nut that was welded in the frame so that I screwed the all thread down so the flat met the the uh, set screw and then when I got it where I wanted I set screwed it and I put my stock on there with my Delrin uh, washer and a uh, metal washer and then my lock nut and everything seems to be okay there so really quickly uh, I want to show you how easy it was to configure the DMM uh, DYN2 AC servos I set them at 2000 counts per revolution and uh, using the DMM DRV uh, software and then in Acorn, I just set the uh, motor steps per rev to 8,000 because uh, in quadrature it's times four, so 2,000 times four is 8,000. That's the resolution I'm going to run at. Um, so anyway, I'm going to. You can see the uh, this way. You can see the monitor behind me. I'll zoom up to it so you can see it a little bit better, and I'll start the DMM DRV software. Um, in my case, uh, to power up the DYN2 drives, I had to fire up CNC 12 so that the e-stop contactor would close and energize my DYN2 drives. So let's uh, let me get turned around here and get you zoomed into the monitor and I'll uh, kind of walk you through that. So for the time being ignore ignore the uh, CNC 12. I'm going to pop up the DMM DRV software right in front of it and go through it. There is a communications cable that goes from the uh, uh, USB port in the on the PC and then it goes to the DMM uh, Dyn2 uh, drives to do the programming so you get up when you buy these things make sure you get the programming cable because you'll need that uh, so anyway mine's mine's all hooked up and let's get this thing fired up so you can see it Okay, hopefully that's pretty good and you can see the monitor. So I'm going to go ahead, it's uh, my e-stop uh, relay is, uh, is energized and closed, so I have power to my, my drive. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start the DMM software here. Don't think I can make this screen any bigger. See if I can zoom you in a little bit more so you can see that screen. Okay, hopefully you get the gist. So the first thing I do is I, I click on connect and then it says set COM port here. So what you do is do the detect COM port. You plug in your, your USB cable and you plug it into the D Plug in the USB cable to the computer and then plug in the uh, other end of that cable to the DYN2 drive that you're going to work on. And that's all connected. So now you do the detect COM port and then it says possible COM port on COM, on COM3. And I say OK and then it says possible COM port on COM4. So I have two choices. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to this drop down and I'm going to try COM3 first and then I'm going to set the COM port. 
and it says COM port settings successful. Okay, here it says we're connected. So I'm going to go to servo setting here. And we're selecting DYN2. And uh, here's the default settings. I'm going to read from the drive and I'll show you where it's at. So the only thing I'm changing is the gear number. So that's where you can tell it what the encoder count you want it to be. It's programmable up to 4096. And then over here under connected out input mode is RS-232. So that's the default. Um, so to set this up, let's, let's read from the drive, see if we can read. And then here it says error reading from servo drive. So I'm going to close this again, and I'm going to try a different COM port. It said earlier COM port 4, so I'm going to try, I've never done it up here. Okay, so it won't let me change it up there. So I'll close this, I'll go back to connect. I'm going to try and detect again. It says possible on 3 and possible on four. So we tried three. So now I'm going to try and uh, use COM port four. Drop down, select four, set the COM port. Successful. It says we're connected. We'll go to servo setting. It's a DYN2 drive. And I'm going to read from the drive. And here you'll see it says two th gear number, it says 2000, and pulse dir is selected. Again, the default is 4096 and R is 232. Pulse dir is step and direction, so you want to make sure you select this and make sure you change your encoder count. Again, I'm using 2000, and then when you're done, you save all, confirm it, and then we'll read it just to make sure it's saved. All parameters red, 2000, pulse dir, and you'll see right here on driver status on position. So that's all there is to setting up the DYN2 uh, to communicate with uh, Centroid Acorn. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I've already set up all three drives. Now I'll zoom you over, I'll move you over to the motor so you can take a look at those. Okay, so here's a motor, here's another one, and then here's the other one. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see those move when I jog. Okay, let me tuck that down a little bit. All right, so all I'm gonna do is use the virtual control panel and I'm gonna jog each axis. This is X, there's my X. Here it is in the other direction. There's Y, you see it in the back. There's Y minus. And then here's my Z plus, Z minus, okay? So there you can see the motors are, are jogging. Now I'm gonna take you back to the screen. I should have showed you this first. But I'm going to just show you the wizard settings that I have set up. All right, so we go utility, wizard, and I have I click I clicked on the DMM DYN2 DYN4 radio button, and all I have programmed right now is E stop OK normally closed because. I do have an e-stop button wired up and then I've got my no fault out to relay one. I need that because that pulls my main contactor to energize my drives. So that's all I've got there. And then under configuration, access configuration, you'll see right here on steps per revolution, I have 8,000 for X, Y, and Z. Um, I've also set an overall turns ratio for right now to one. 
And then max rates, I've got 500 inches a minute, fast jog 100 inches a minute, and then slow jog 20 inches a minute, just for the purposes of testing. So that's that. Um, let me, let's do a home set. And it's a simple home, I don't have switches, so I just did a simple home. So now I'm gonna go into MDI and I'm going to do a G0X1 and I'm going to cycle start and it moved an inch I'm going to go G0X0 cycle start and I'm going to zoom you to the motor I'll do the same thing so you can see it turn Okay, let's use, there are two set screws. There's one at three o'clock and one at six o'clock. We'll use this one right here. Take a look, just keep an eye on that. So I'm gonna do that command again, G0X1. And it made one revolution. That's why I set the turns to one, just to do that test. And there's the three o'clock. So I'm gonna go the other way. I'll, I'll do a, uh, I'm going to go slower. I'll go G01X0 feed rate of 20. There you go. So there we verified that with my 8,000 steps uh, per motor rev set and my uh, uh, my turns ratio set to one. When I call an inch, I'm basically telling the control the, with one revolution of the motor, it will move an inch. So by putting a, a G0X1, I've told the control to do a rapid for one inch and it gave us one revolution. So there you go. So uh, let me do, I'm going to do a, go a little handheld so you can see what's going on with everything, let you get an idea of the back panel and so forth. Try not to be shaky here. Okay, here, this fuse block, I'm running 220 on my system. Okay, the Acorn power supply runs on 220. And if you look at PC power supplies, I'm using the Lenovo M92P Tinies. Their power supplies will run 110 or 220. The power, the, the power supply, the AC adapter for the monitor that I'm using is just like this one. It's the same thing. It'll run on 220. So you verify your power supplies. If they all run on 220, you can run everything on 220. So for the purposes of testing, I have 10 amp fuses in here. Here's my e-stop contactor. So the way it's wired right now, it's wired. I have a, a this is an earlier generation of Acorn board. So I, I have the one with the two relays on board. This is output one. So I have a uh, 24 volts AC going into this and out, up to the contactor. 24 volts is AC is going in, and then it's going out, and then it's going up to the e-stop contactor. The voltage is, is provided by this, this uh, toroidal transformer. It's outputting about 19 volts of AC, which is enough to pull that contactor. So the gist of it is when everything's okay, when CNC 12 is fine and there are no faults, relay one will close and it will energize, it will close and pull this contactor, which in turn, you see this blue and white wire? Well, this is the DC power from my power supply here. Okay, so voltage in, voltage out, and then that comes down to this little block, and then I'm breaking out the uh, DC power in three separate pair of wire to my DYN4 drives. Here you can see the, the DC, DC, DC. Okay, uh, I am using uh, the, the little Acorn, C86 Acorn breakout board from CNC for PC. As you can tell, it plugs right into the headers and you just set screw the terminals. It needs uh, 12 volts 
Um, fortunately, this power supply supplies 12 volts. It says 12 volts or 24 volts, and when I connected 24 volts to it, I had a little bit of relay chatter from this relay, and uh, this is the fault output relay. So when there's a fault, it will close and let Acorn know that there's a dry fault. Um, so, and then here are the small uh, DYN2, uh, they're called C34, C34 DYN2 uh, boards, and they plug right into the, uh, they connect right into DYN2 terminals. You just tighten the set screws against it, and then you use this little uh, Ethernet uh, patch cable to connect from C86 to the, uh, the little C34 boards here. So this takes some, this eliminates some of the, uh, the guesswork out of uh, wiring um, from here to here. Kind of simplifies things. Um, this cable is the encoder cable to the motor and that's motor power. And this is the five volt power source that uh, DYN2 requires, this, this purple wire here. And then it's getting its ground via the, the cable. And of course there's Acorn, there's my relay board. Uh, it's an NPN relay board, so 24 volts in, and then these all go to the outputs here on Acorn. This is a TB1 uh, terminal block, it's a 15 position terminal block. Um, this mimics this setup here with the e-stop relay and the terminal block mimics Centroid's uh, servo drives, uh, the Oak and the all-in-one DC. And then this is Acorn's uh, logic power supply. I got 5 volts, I've got uh, 12 volts, I've got 24 volts all from this power supply. This is not what's uh, typically supplied with Acorn. This one just happens to have a uh, 12 volt output as well. So it's, a, it's a, uh, a triple output power supply there. Okay, and then this is my toroidal transformer. It's going into what's called a bridge rectifier. This is uh, 240 volts input and I believe it's 40 volts AC output and then it goes to what's called a bridge rectifier uh, you'll see it, the AC goes on this terminal and this terminal and then DC comes out here that's positive and negative these filter capacitors are usually marked on the side there you'll see the negative sign negative sign so this is negative negative and positive and uh, so this is filtering the, the, the caps are filtering the DC and then this is my DC output again. This DC output now goes up. It's going up to the e-stop contactor and then it comes down, comes back into this terminal block here. And then the three pair go out to the drives. So that's pretty much the uh, overview of the back panel. Um, that's done. Uh, it seems to be working. Um, the VFD is not connected yet. Um, I'll do that on the machine, but you'll see this purple cable here. It is connected for the VFD uh, on the outputs of the relays, the uh, analog signal output for the spindle, and so forth. Uh, incidentally, the common is broken by the e-stop contactor to the VFD so that if there's a fault, there's no way the VFD can actually run because there's no, no common to the, uh, the forward reverse inputs on that. Um, this is the drawing that I was using for reference. Uh, it's a first draft uh, from Centroid. Again, it's an uh, attempt to mimic the all-in-one DC and the Acorn schematics and it's showing to use the e-stop contactor. Um, Centroid calls it CNT1. Um, this is kind of the kitchen sink thing. If you've got, uh, here's the, uh, the inverters up in the corner, color code. Um, this is if this is a, the switch on off switch example um, oh and you got to use snubbers on everything on the coils of these relays that's what this symbol is is a snubber and that's what it says right here uh, you can buy them from centroid this is the transformer that I'm using uh, very similar to that one and then this would be the axis drive power supply um, again I just went over that with you, and then there's the three drives. And then here's the power logic power supply for Acorn. This is uh, Acorn Revision 4. It's coming with this relay board with the LEDs on it. This version of Acorn has the LEDs on it. Um, but again, I used it for reference. 
Um, there's a little schematic for a probe connector. Here's the e-stop. Um, anyway, this is the way to wire uh, a machine safely using a, an e-stop contactor. So that's enough of that. Let's go over to the machine and I'll show you the stock. Okay, here's the, uh, there's the monitor. You've seen that before, the keyboard tray and so forth. But uh, here's my uh, piece of all thread. And again, I ground a flat on it. And then there's a set screw, quarter 20 set screw that actually goes into the nut. There's a three quarter inch nut in this piece of inch and a quarter square tubing. And I just drilled and tapped it. And then the flat is facing the set screw so that uh, I can tighten it. Now the bolt, the bolt doesn't turn and I can set the tension and forget it on the uh, lock nut here. There's also my Delrin washers that I turned. I just took a piece of round Delrin and turned them and bored them, just drilled them out for this. And so that's all done. It works well. See, I can, I'll be able to push that out of the way or, you know, I can swivel the, the PC and the, the uh, monitor out of the way when I'm not using the machine. There's the, uh, the chassis for the uh, computer. Computer will slide in here. There's two thumb screws that bolt in there and secure it. And then I'll just cable down the stock and then down into the cabinet here, control cabinet. Nothing to see in the control cabinet right now. Uh, all this is pretty much done. I've got to move this because as we discovered, it's right where the ball nut is going to be in the way. So I'm just going to raise it up here where it's out of the way. This is going to carry the uh, motor cable and encoder cable for X and Z. Y is down here and it's gonna it's just basically gonna drop in and go to the cabinet. And then uh, VFD you can see kind of this dead space here. The VFD is gonna go in here um, probably on the back side of of the uh, cabinet. There's a kind of a partition wall there. So anyway that about does it for this update. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. Um, it's probably gonna be a few days before I get back on this. But uh, the next step will be feeding cable through the cable carriers, uh, all the motor cables, encoder cables, and so forth, mounting up the motors. But um, all that preliminary work's done. Uh, you saw the couplers on the motors. You saw the pulleys. I already uh, machined those pulleys. I bought pulley stock. Um, and um, I'll show you here. I bought the pulley stock and I bought these pulleys. So the pulley stock will come out here. I basically bought these pulleys new pulleys to fit this and I inverted them so they're closer to the frame so I didn't have as much hangout uh, when I put that pulley in there. So those pulleys are about the thickness of this frame plus the plate and then enough to to mesh with the uh, pulley here. That's the way Y is as well. Of course Z uses those old ham couplers and there's the old ham coupler there already. This half is already mounted up. The other motors mounted up. I went ahead and machined the top of this and the bottom, make it flat and thinner to make up for the thickness of the uh, the adapter plate. I, this could take NEMA 34 motors, but I'm using NEMA 23s, so I have an adapter plate that will bolt in this place. And anyway, it, it all lines up really well. Um, I've got to take this mount off and put the 80 millimeter mount on it and get the VFD in there. So maybe next week. Uh, We'll see some more progress on this and maybe start to wrap it up. All right, that's it for now. So until next time, we'll talk to you soon.